So, today's headline story, a lot like yesterday's. I have a piggy bank with only pennies and dimes. I took out seven coins. What is a headline story? Sometimes it's like a good word problem, even a traditional word problem, that has left the question out. The problem for the kids is, what can we say? At other times, a headline story can contain the entire structure of a problem, but be missing some numbers. Let's see how that looks in Kathy Fucci's first grade class. Story, And we've been singing our song about Mary Mac. So let's read our story about Mary Mac. Mary Mac had dimes and pennies. She had how many cents? Let's see, can someone help me? Put some words in for Mary Mac so she can have some money. Uh, Maddie, what do you think? Um, for pennies, five. For pennies, five. I don't know the dimes. How many dimes would you like her to have? Ten. You want her to have ten dimes. All right, let's see. Sometimes when we do our stories, we can make a chart. So. Let's make a chart this time. Maddie gave us an idea. Who else would like to give us an idea of how many dimes and how many pennies? And maybe we could read the whole story when we fill in our numbers. Olivia, could you give us read the whole story and fill it in? Mary Mac had um Three dimes. Three dimes. All right, let's put it on our chart. And she had 11 pennies. And 11 pennies. She had how many cents altogether? She had three dimes and 11 pennies. Who can just count the dimes for me? How much did she have just counting her three dimes, Nicholas? 30. 30 and 11 more pennies. Andrew? 41. 41. Andrew, can you tell us the, the way you got that answer? Can you tell us about your strategy? Because um, I knew 11 and 30 was 41. You know 11 and 30 is 41. What if Mary Mac didn't want to carry 11 pennies in her pocketbook? They were just too heavy. Could she trade in, make a trade for some of those pennies and get a different coin that she could carry? Could she trade in any of those pennies for a dime so she wouldn't have to carry so many? What do you think? Alie, what do you think? Could she? Yeah. If she has 11 pennies, how many could she trade any of those for a dime? How many? 10. 10. So if she had three dimes before and she got one more, how many would she have? Um. If she had three and we gave her one more, how many would she have? If she had three dimes and three we dimes. gave her one more, how many would she have? Forty. Forty? She'd have forty cents, but how many dimes would she have? Maybe I didn't ask that correctly. How many dimes would she have if she had three and we gave her one more? Four. Four dimes, all right. If she had four dimes and we wanted her to still have her 41 cents, how many pennies would we need to give her? Ariana, what do you think? Um, ten. If she had four dimes, how much money would she have? Rosemary, can you help? Ten. If she had four dimes, how much money would she have? Ten. Twenty. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. And we want her to have 41 cents. So how many pennies would she need? One. Only one. That's right. All right. I'm going to save our headline story because this is the message that's going to go home with someone today. And it leaves some room on our chart so that the person who gets this message can share their information with their family at home. How many dimes would you like her to have? 
She doesn't want to go with that. Ten dimes makes the numbers just too big for her class, but she doesn't want to reject it either, so she pulls out a chart and starts again. The second suggestion is three dimes, but 11 pennies. And this time she decides to go for it. Uh, she uses it as an opportunity to get the kids trading pennies for dimes and then moving directly into the lesson. One of the beauties, something that she just added on herself, is allowing this problem now to go home to some lucky child at the end of the day. Uh, her message with that is, um, work can be a gift. Headline stories also present a nice opportunity to tackle one of the greatest difficulties students have with word problems, and that is understanding what the problem is saying. This is a matter of understanding the words, understanding the context, understanding what question is being asked, and keeping track that they are actually answering that question and not some other one. Boys and girls, I was taking a walk the other day and I had some pennies in my pocket just like I do today. I had 10 pennies in my pocket. And today I have 10 pennies in my pocket too. But the other day I wasn't so lucky because my pants were old and I had a hole in my pocket and some of the pennies fell out as I was walking. So what do you think happened? Who can raise a quiet hand and tell me? Anaya, what do you think? When you was probably putting on your pants, it might have ripped. They did, and I had a hole in them, and some pennies fell out. What do you think, Jenny? It fell down to the floor. They fell out to the floor. Brianna, I wonder how many, how many do you think fell out? Five. So if five pennies fell out of my pocket onto the ground, how many do you think were left in my pocket? Go ahead, Brianna. Five. That's good, because I started off with ten. Five fell out to the ground, and I had five left in my pocket. But I'm not sure if five fell out. Maybe a different amount fell out. What do you think, Curvins? Ten. Maybe that hole was really big and all ten fell out. Then what would happen? You have no more? I would have no pennies in my pocket at all. I'd have no money. And then someone would come along and pick them up afterwards. But maybe that hole wasn't so big. And maybe not all 10 fell out. Savannah, how many do you think fell out? Four. Four. So if I had 10 pennies and four fell out, do you know how many I'd have left in my pocket? Six. Six. Oh, excellent job. Let's do two more, Dante and then Max. How many do you think fell out, Dante? Three. So how many do you think were left? In my pocket. Seven. That means I would have seven cents in my pocket. All right, and go ahead, Max. What's your guess of how many fell out? Four. So if four fell out, I started off with 10. One, two, three, four fell out. How many do you think I had left? Six. I had six. So. Those are all very good answers. And today, boys and girls, I just want to show you. Here's my 10 pennies. And my pocket does not have a hole in it. So hopefully they won't fall out today. OK. So none fell out? None have fallen out. So I have 10 in my pocket today, because zero fell out of my pocket. Ms. Julian's acting um, not only helps to engage the children, but helps to make the problem situation clear without tedious explanation. But of course, with any theater like this, um, the children first respond to the entire problem situation, and not just to the mathematics. So Ms. Julian goes on to tailor their responses to bring them in to what the mathematical problem is. And of course, they get so engaged that at the very end, when the teacher has considered the problem done, shows her pockets, no hole, one child continues to think about the mathematics.